Hello and welcome to the Stampscapes Lab, as in laboratory. We're going to try this wood grain paper, and I've been practicing um, various techniques on it, seeing what alcohol inks look like, applying tone to it, but I was thinking that I want to try to add some shadow to this paper, but um, I was thinking that sometimes adding black to it um, can be a little bit harsh at times. I mean, I think it looks really good. Here's the mirror card that I did uh, previously. And I think those tones look pretty good, but going with grayscale on an otherwise kind of orangish warm tone, wood tone, you know, surface, um, it, it doesn't really match super well the, the color scheme of the, uh, you know, the existing surface. So I thought, you know, I mean, this is supposed to be wood grain, so I thought we would use more of the, you know, something like that would be a, um, a wood stain uh, type of coloring. So here's walnut stain, literally, it's, it's called stain, but just some brown tones. This is a medium tone brown, this is a darker brown. You can use whatever uh, brand you want. Those ones happen to be um, dye-based inks. Uh, you can try some other types. I, I, I'm just getting into the, uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, the very basics in terms of exploring this um, medium here. Okay, so I want to go dark, uh, darker than this paper. So I thought we would go try a nighttime type of scene. So if I just stamp this right in here, like so, um, in black ink, and that would be okay, but that moon wouldn't really stand out very strongly because the area around it wouldn't be quite as dark. So what I usually do when I'm stamping this out on any type of scene is I stamp the uh, the image and then I tone in around it, okay? So it just depends on what media and surface you're using as to, you know, determine, you know, what uh, inks you use around it. But in this case, let's let's see. Let's put this one a little bit off center. I'm going with a stays on again. Um, if you watch my other videos, I just my initial test video, the stays on just came out darkest of all the uh, the black colors that I happened to use that time. Like I said, if you get any of this paper, just do some tests with the existing inks that you have. A lot of times. You know, people have multiple types of, uh, especially black inks in their uh, in their collection. Okay, so that has been stamped out. Let me see. Should I stamp out something else in this one? I can go with a cabin like this or something like that. Or should we just test out the? Uh, let's just test out the uh, the coloring here. All right, I'm going to try to use. Um, some of my peach bellini. It's a very light toned, uh, kind of warmish, well, peach uh, type of color. Okay, I'm just going with this uh, reinker fluid on here just to uh, kind of expedite the uh, the process here. All right. Now, what I'm going to try to do is when you're toning this out around the moon, or if you want the moon to stand out, in other words then simply don't put ink over it, right? We want to make the area around it darker, okay, for it to stand out. But the thing about this is, is you know, we're using this wood grain paper, so I want, you know, the, I don't want to, you know, completely obscure the wood grain from it, otherwise we might as well be working on a, uh, you know, white piece of paper. But, you know, I mean, the color, you know, this warm toned um, foundation is a good, you know, base coat too, I guess. So, but you know, the, the fun of this paper is in, you know, the, the retention of the surface. So, um, keep that in mind as you're tuning in. All right. So you can see where I've added this in. Let's keep another piece. So you, I'll put this piece right next to it so you can see kind of, uh, you know, the colors that uh, the one I'm toning um, is changing into, okay? So it looks like a little bit of a warmer, you know, um, surface here. 
it's a little bit more orangish. You know, that peach has a little bit of red in it. As does this paper. If they were printing this, this would be a combination of... Um, what would it be? It'd be a combination of cyan, magenta, and uh, yellow. Okay, so this is the brown, so we're going a little bit darker here, okay? I don't know if it feels like I'm kind of staining this wood, but in some ways it almost does, you know? I mean, it's, you know, it's paper, it's, it's pretty cheap, thin paper, but um, I don't know. In terms of the colors, it, uh, I don't know, it, it feels like a little bit like staining wood when we're going to this. Yeah, look how reddish that is, you know, with this additional brown here. <laughs> this paper is so thin, you gotta, you know, if you're toning around, you have to uh, lock down the paper, so it, it'll kind of crimp on you. Like I said, this is not cardstock. This is a, if, if you haven't watched my previous videos, this paper is a... A trimmed down disposable you know wood grained um, placemat you know something that you put underneath your uh, I don't know whatever plates or paper plates you know if you're having a little bit of picnic or something like that and you just toss it out after so you know not designed for crafting on and applying a, diff a lot of different media it's for you know putting food on top of and you know whatever spilling on it and taking your thing and tossing it in the trash all right so that was the next tone let's try a little bit of a dark brown i think it looks pretty good as is but oh that is really dark um you know might as well test out everything so this would be like a I don't know, the equivalent, of if you had like a walnut stain or something like that. Oh, by the way, I forgot to use the walnut stain there. Uh, distress ink. At this point in time, everything's darker than the, the walnut stain, so I'll just go with this. But that looks pretty darn good, you know, that uh, walnut. I always loved walnut um, flooring, you know, that dark flooring that you see on, I don't know, whatever, laminates and... Um, hardwoods, stuff like that. I always love the look of that. Oh my gosh, that. So it's, this is starting to look better and better to me in terms of uh, the brown tones in here. I mean, it's the perfect complement, right? Now, I didn't stamp out my moon in brown, but I think that would look really good if there's a dark brown stays on ink. I only have black stays on. Oh, and white. I didn't really use too much of it either. I had my black pad for years and years and years and didn't really use it too much. Okay, so anyways, this is what this looks like right here. And, you know, I don't know this isn't the same area of the page that I was... Uh, using in here in terms of the pattern, but you can see the uh, the colors. So here's just basic colors right here and up here, uh, the foundational color without any of this additional tone laid down. I think that looks pretty good um, just in terms of, uh, I don't know, something reminiscent of a, of a, uh, uh, whatever, a stained piece of wood, I guess. All right, so let's just, uh, let's see. Let's add in uh, uh, some trees in here. I mean, we stamp out whatever we want. I just wanna, when I get done with these types of things, sometimes I, I get curious about seeing what it looks like in the context of a scene, so. Let's give it a try. All right, now, so this, This ink has been laid down on here, so it's a little bit moist. So keep that in mind. 
you're stamping out a uh, some solvent ink over. Eh, it didn't seem to interfere with it. I was just wondering if kind of a damp water-based surface might kind of interfere with my impression quality. If anything, I think this stays on is going on darker with this, uh, you know, this whatever treatment over the uh, over the paper. It's almost like it opened up the pores a little bit more. see what this would look like kind of matted off and framed eh, it's a little bit warm maybe for that gold maybe I'd put like a copper around it or something like that um, let's see if I could find some kind of word stamp up here it's really dark up here so I don't know if I would stamp anything else in there but um, I don't know we'll do a little uh, test Actually, I, might, I think I might change my mind on stamping um, some sort of a uh, word stamp in here but I, I thought I would bring in some highlights now because we are we do have some lighting in here now with the moon being lighter let's get this little, little test here and see if uh, now here's a beige um, paint pen okay so it's not white because this moon isn't white so our source of light is not white but um, it's a little bit lighter than the surrounding area so yeah, this pen's a little bit lighter than the moon, but I think it looks okay. So I need a little bit of highlighting around like that, and I'll put some highlights on the side. Now I'm gonna add about too many highlights on here because everything's, you know, everything's fairly dark. But just adding in a little bit of, uh, I don't know, some additional lighting kind of direction plus texture and light might be kind of interesting. So putting these little highlights in here, to me, it almost seems like it's illuminating the moon a little bit more. It's kind of, I don't know, for some reason my moon looks lighter to me now. <laughs> Just because of the illusion of a uh, reflected light on all these different objects around there. And like I said, I'm not adding in like a huge amount of these little reflective, in this case, dots here. You notice on the uh, the left side of the trees, with the trees on the right, um, have been added. Uh, you know the highlights have been added, and the trees to the left of the moon, the right sides of the trees are illuminated. Well, this one's like underneath. You can do like highlights, like on both sides of the tree. But trees over here have all most of the highlights on the uh, their left side. And again, this one to the left have the right side illumination. Bottom lighting under the cloud to the cloud over. Top lighting for the, uh, the clouds underneath the moon. Okay. Okay, so anyways. Um, staining wood grained paper <laughs> not really staining but inking you know with kind of a stain I don't know whatever color scheme to it okay now this I it might stay that dark but 
I find that inks on this paper, I think, I, I'm not sure, um, I think they look a little bit lighter when they dry. Okay, so this is still fairly, you know, moist because of all that ink that I laid down there. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about, I don't think it's going to get 20% lighter than that, but it might drop um, by maybe 5% when that dries or so. Okay, but anyways, uh, if you get this paper and you feel like uh, kind of going for some color value range um, variations on there, maybe go with the, you know, your brown tones. Mix and match, you know, whatever um, inks you have. A lot of distress inks out there um, in those initial kind of uh, color releases that they had tend to look kind of those real earthy types of uh, colors out there. Um, not just the browns, but uh, the other types of things like, I don't know, what was it? That, that green color, um, maybe even blue or something like that. You know, if you're using this um, type of paper for a winter scene, I think it could be used in blue tones, even with all that warm tones down there. So you can have something like a tumbled glass or something like that in there. It might be kind of interesting, I don't know. But there are other types of, uh, there are colored wood stains out there. You know, there's blues or something like that. It tends to be not really like super bright blues or something like super bright greens. They tend to be a little bit more earthy from what I recall. I'm trying to remember looking at that, uh, if you go into the, like the stain aisle in like a Home Depot or something like that, a lot of times there's like a, a little display with a little swatch of uh, that stain on each one of those pieces of wood. Um, so you can, you know, get the gist of, uh, you know, what uh, that will, those stains will look like in application, okay? But they, they tended to be kind of a little bit more of an earthy type of color scheme, like, like those distress things. But I don't know, you can try anything. A lot, I think if you try, um, you know, some different types of dye inks over the top of it, it would tend to look a little bit more distressed anyways, because you have that wood grain showing through it, so you know, but go start off with your really light tones. Like I started off with this one with the Peach Bellini, which was a um, shadow stamping ink, you know, so very, very light in value. So always start off with the lightest, dullest one if you have it, you know, not maybe not going with something like an electric neon green or something like that. Although, you know, you could try it, you know, give it a test. This paper's really inexpensive and you know, 11 by 17 placements, so, you know, super cheap, and you can get a lot of these quarter page pieces, you know, from just one sheet of it, too, so you can test out all kinds of different uh, types of applications. So we haven't even tested out stuff like um, embossing on it, you know, which could uh, be a whole new can of worms, fun worms. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or uh, suggestions for this paper, you know, as far as uh, applications that you can see for it, let me know. Now I think about this would be kind of cool if we just mat this on another piece of that wood grain paper and, you know, a little perimeter like that would be kind of cool. All right. Thanks again.